Yes. I heard you guys talking about sometimes there's a time to let things up, to look at them, and other times it's just, no, not that. And so I guess the concept of metaphysical ghosting comes into my mind. And I don't know if it's just the ego wanting to use it as a way to doubt, but my question is like whether it's saying, no, not that, or whether it's going for the linchpin and the plug and saying, I'm not a body, the mind can't attack. It's like, I still get confused as to when it's just like an avoidance technique, when it actually is ghosting, to just say that, especially if I don't believe it, and when it actually can be helpful to let whatever the thought is coming up instead of just skipping over it and saying, no, I'm not a body, my mind can't attack. So, you know, maybe if you could just speak a little bit about that, because I feel like that confusion is almost a trap, like to keep me, like I feel like that's maybe where the ego's coming in. It's like, it's, instead of just trusting when it feels good to let it come up and when it feels good to say, no, not that, I get stuck in thinking, oh, but am I skipping a step? Am I just glossing over it? Am I just like, resisting wanting to look at something I really should be looking at. We kind of coined the phrase metaphysical ghosting uh, over the years and through our MMT program and so on and so forth. And it really actually refers to, to the misuse of words. Um, words are but symbols of symbols twice removed from reality. And when you try to say the words like, I am one, all is well, like some of the prayers um, that you hear in, in metaphysical circles or unity and so on and so forth, uh, you know, and where the words are given but, but there's an emotion underneath that, that does not match, it's not congruent with the words. So the words are being used almost like an affirmation would be, you know, and, but the, the words are not congruent with the state of mind. And so, what we're saying is, you must get in touch with what you feel. You can't use the words, you know, as part of a defense to push down, repress and deny the emotions. Now, A Course in Miracles is, is a course in, in changing your thoughts and knowing that the effects of those thoughts, which is what the world is, my, my thoughts are images I have made, the effects will change as well. When you change your mind, when you change your thinking, you change the perception of the world that you perceive, and that's how you escape from the world that you see, escape from a distorted world, a fragmented world, a, a world of judgment, and you escape from it by the miracle, by a change of mind, a shift in perception, a shift in thinking from wrong-mindedness to right-mindedness. So metaphysical ghosting would be the inappropriate use of words, as if by changing, by saying the words, I've heard people say that, just say the words and you'll change your mind. Well, that's backwards. The words are effects. It's saying, say the word, use the right effects, and your mind will surely follow doesn't work that way. You have to change your thinking. So A Course in Miracles is a course in changing your thinking. It may, it may give you things like a workbook where it gives you, it will tell you things to do sometimes, but mostly it's pointing, you know, like when it says sit quietly, it's obviously talking to you as if you have a body. It's not saying, I know your mind, but sit quietly. You know, it's, it's talking to you where you believe you're at. It's, it's talking to you as if you're a body. It even takes you on guided meditations as if you're, you're sinking down deep in your mind and you're going through the clouds and Jesus says, feel them on your cheeks. Feel them on your cheeks? The mind doesn't have cheeks, but no, feel them on your cheeks as you pass through them. He's given you a very visual guided meditation as if you're still a body 
and and he's going to use that to train your mind to see that it's it, it is purely mind holy mind purely mind and it has no body at all he says the body is outside you but it seems to surround you shutting you off from others wow that's interesting the body is outside you he says see how he's talking about it in a way to put it like almost like an armor the body is outside you but it seems to surround you then he turns around at another point he says there is nothing outside of you well which is it is the body outside of me or there's nothing outside of me the body is nothing oh okay I'm, I'll keep at it you know we have to keep following what he's saying you know he's coming 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 at this and so metaphysical ghosting would be like um, uh, some of you have seen Anger Management, you know, that's a really good movie at, you know, Adam Sandler plays a typical guy and Jack Nicholson plays this kind of crazy therapist with wild tactics to bring up all of the anger that he has pushed down in his mind. I've shown that movie so many times around the world. I remember when Kirsten first came and she was at the Peace House and I showed it she couldn't even sleep. She was so mad. She went up there at night. She was, she couldn't even sleep. She watched Anger Management. I think it's one of the funniest movies on the planet. But she was so mad at the way that she perceived Adam Sandler was treated. She was just like, having visceral reactions when on the plane, what, what Jack Nicholson was doing, and then this, and then the stewardesses, and then the guy, the black, tall black man comes up with a stun gun. She's just like, you know, like he's this sweet guy, you know. Marissa Tomei, beautiful girlfriend, he's a sweet guy, and all through the movie you see his face contort more and more and more as his anger just comes up and comes up and comes up. He's got the same anger that is the ego's rage at God. That, that's in the subconscious mind for everyone, but masterfully that in that movie it comes up and it comes up and it comes up and it's allowed to come up until at, by the end of the movie you know he's gone through like a major transformation with this uh, repressed anger. That's what we're trying to get to when we say let the emotions up, don't push them down, let them come up. But ultimately, that's only a stepping stone to come to a decision point. You know, it is a decision in our mind, and we want to come to that. When I used to show movies, like full-length movies, I was teaching four-hour psychology classes many, many, many years ago, um, and I would have all these students, most of them were 18, 19, 20, some of them up in years, coming back for continuing education, but most of them were like in that range. and. They weren't psychologists, they weren't counselors, they, they were art students. I was, I was teaching the Course in Miracles to art students without using the words God and Holy Spirit and Jesus and Christ. I let the Holy Spirit teach four-hour classes at an art institute. And I used full-length movies, and I would talk about all these dynamics, denial, repression, projection, but I would use the movies to point them out, and they would, by the end of the semester, they were like, oh, look at the, the oh, projection, you know. They were like, they were spiritual psychiatrists by the end of the semester because I was using the movies to point things out. So, one of the words that I, I tend to emphasize, and it's, I think it's anger management, a lot of the movies get at too, is this word, fine. How are you doing? Fine. Really? Fine. I'm fine. Fine. <laughs> you know, and I've seen the fine families. Uh, they talk, uh, you know, and you see them, you can see them in the movies. If you watch different movies, they're the fine families. There's Mama Fine, Papa Fine, instead of the cone heads, this is the fine family. Mother Fine, Father Fine, Sister Fine, Brother Fine, all. And they sit there at the table and they, they're eating the food and how's your day? Fine. How was your day? Fine, 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 fine. It's, that's ghosting. There's emotions under the surface that are not fine. Uh, fine is okay. That's another word, the okay family. That's the ne neighbors. How, okay, okay, okay! <laughs> you know, it's all, everything is okay. But underneath it, there's, 
you have to let those emotions up in order to be free of those emotions and those thoughts. So metaphysical ghosting is just an allowance, giving yourself an allowance, giving your mind a permission to let those come into awareness. All the while aware that the emotions are being generated by thoughts. And the thoughts are held in place by beliefs. And that for me has been the inner journey, has been getting in touch with my thoughts so that I could get in touch with my beliefs, so that I could surrender my beliefs to the Holy Spirit, an inward process. And we, you know, the use of words is something that, that the ego can have a field day with. High metaphysical ideas. You know, sometimes people will say, well, I've got a Course in Miracles teacher, he knows the metaphysics inside out, he can dis dissect, discuss anything of the Course, and, you know, and he's always fine. Fine, 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 fine. He's intellectually fine. He's He's good, he's sharp intellectually, but it's like the princess and the pea. If, there's, if you're sitting on, it doesn't matter how many layers and mattresses you've got, if you're sensitized and there's a pea down there and you're, you know, you're feeling the pea, and even if you got the right words, it's not going to do you a lot of good. You have to get down, you have to get down into those emotions and everything. So what we're doing is we're encouraging that and also, we have a system of guidance in the sense that for those that are highly, highly mind trained and consistently peaceful and happy and joyful, those are the ones we look to in the community in a sense of trust. You know, you shall know them by their fruits. That's the place where, where trust is directed. So that even if you can't hear sometimes one way or the other, you know, you trust you trust that. Because there's almost, you can say, a sense of, it's not really achievement or accomplishment in the worldly sense, but there's an experiential presence that's there that you can really feel. It's like a, you can tangibly feel it, and then that's what turns into a teacher uh, in your relationship. And then we work with that as we continue to allow those emotions to come up because they have to be cleared, and there's no way that they're going to be cleared if they're just kind of glossed over with pretty words. And so I would say the Course is a Course in Mind Training, that when you're going through those workbook lessons, he's offering the lesson of the day as a safe substitute for all ego thinking and attack thoughts. That's almost like you're drowning out there in the ocean and somebody's ready to throw you out a life preserver. It's the lesson of the day. <laughs> Whatever it is, it could be any of those lessons. That's the, the life preserver on the rope. So as you're thrashing about out in the water and the, and the water's going up into your nostrils and, and down into your mouth, you can grab hold onto something as a safe replacement for all ego thoughts. But he's not asking you to go through the day. You're at the grocery store. You're paying for your, your items, your bananas, your peaches, your oranges and everything. The cashier says, how's your day? Lesson 139. I will accept the atonement for myself. <laughs> she doesn't care. You don't need to use those words. She's not interested. That'll be $4.52, buddy. <laughs> Whatever that 139 is in atonement, good luck with that. Give us the cash. Or no peaches for you. Uh, you know, it's, it's, this is not a course in going around and trying to bonk people over the head. I am a spirit. <laughs> well, you got, you're getting a traffic ticket. I am spirit. I'm giving you the ticket anyway. I am the Holy Son of God Himself. You know, it's not a course to be spoken. It's not a course to be spoken. It's to be lived. <laughs>